Our next presenter is from the Falk Lab School in Pennsylvania. Her talk is called Puppetry as an Interdisciplinary Connector. Please welcome Cheryl Cabazzuti. Hi, I'm an artist, educator, and giant puppet maker. This is a shot from my studio, and I'm here today to inspire you to consider the art of puppetry as a perfect interdisciplinary connector for building collaborative communities and ultimately to allow us to feel what it feels like to be human. I make um, parades and pageants in Pittsburgh and uh, bring people from all walks of life together into a creative process of celebration and joy and have worked as an artist in residence in schools all over the region. In 2009, I was invited to the Falk Lab School, which is a project or a school affiliated with the University of Pittsburgh. I did a residency and at the end of the residency they said, hey, do you want to stay? <laughs> do you want to do what you've been doing all over the place and bring it here to our school? And I thought about it for a minute and I thought, yeah, I'll dive deep into what it means to integrate puppetry into a community. Now, to be fair, Falk was already a puppet school. My colleague in the art studio was using uh, Felix, the Komodo dragon, to um, coach kids in how to um, push through their fears of making art. And let's face it, Puppetry has been part of our world since time began. People have used the materials at hand to connect and tell stories forever, from Indonesian shadow puppets carved from the skins of animals to terracotta clay puppets crafted from the dirt of our earth. People have used puppets to connect, collaborate, and share who they are. I ask kids, what do we have a whole bunch of that we could use to make puppets? And, you know, we've got tubes and bottles and beads and paper and glue. How do we put those together to tell our stories? This is a maraca puppet that we use, super simple, in kindergarten to explore patterns in music and in everyday life. Um, as our kids grow, we find that puppets are a great way to activate stories. In third grade, they make puppets of a pet they have or one they would love to have and write a story of friendship that they share with our community. In fourth grade, we ask kids, what's the language of caring and how do you put that into puppetry, and they write animal lullabies. And there's something about holding your baby tiger in your hand as you share your work with a 100 people that transforms your confidence and allows you to share something that's actually really meaningful. But puppetry doesn't just belong in the humanities. I mean, all kinds of engineers could learn from the art of puppetry, and there's patterns out there for anything. Our kids build and cut and measure and make all kinds of puppets. They're here, they're making a spring-loaded moving mouth puppet, or the pieces for it, to use for an integrated puppet play. We then have our students write a play in Spanish, perform um, music that they compose, and in this show, it's um, called The Song of the Armadillo. They have to design a puppet that starts as an armadillo, but has to become a musical instrument by the end. <laughs> it's dark, right? But, <laughs> but so question one is how do you make the armadillo? But question two is how does the armadillo feel? And how do we feel whenever we're making things? Um, I also do a lot of work in connection with our maker space. I'm the art, I'm an art teacher and collaborator in residence, but we're, because we live next, our school lives next door to CMU, we've piloted the Hummingbird programming platform to make animatronics with kids. You can go check it out in the makerspace here. Um, and so we ask kids, like, not just how do you make a puppet that has servo arms and a moving head, but how do you make the puppet move in the way that has meaning? How do you use it to tell your story and use the stuff that we have to make it happen. Of course, um, there's lots of uses for new media. We've, um, one of our long-standing projects in seventh grade is design and build your dream bedroom. Great. What I wanna know is, 
what happened in the dream bedroom? What's the story there? And so we'll ask kids to make small plasticine puppets and use stop motion animation to bring their story to life. But I like big stories, too. Um, in this collaboration, we had students read the book War Horse, see, we actually had a chance to see the show, and um, they learned about World War I through the lens of the story of a boy and his horse. Then I tossed some cardboard on the table and said, okay, work as a team. Make your own horses. How do we make, how do we take the stuff we have at hand to feel something, to make something, to build something? And this is what was cool. Yes, they made beautiful objects out of cardboard and staples. But when they sang their songs and they learned to breathe together as performers and they filled a seventh grade middle school classroom with the pathos of World War I and felt that in their hearts, magic happened. Magic can happen through the art of puppetry. Now, I love this toss out some cardboard thing. We do a big maker day where we invite families and kids of every age in our school, we're a K-8 school, to come together. And in this challenge, I said, okay, we're turning the pedicabs in Pittsburgh bicycle carts, into giant puppets. What should they be? They took inspiration from the topography of Pittsburgh, and if you've ever been there, you'll recognize those red iconic inclines and the historic tunnels through the mountain that makes the gateway to Pittsburgh. They brought our landscape to life, and when we popped them onto the pedicabs on New Year's Eve to see like our community made work come to life and allow people with disabilities to join that New Year's parade I've been making for 20 years. Our world was full of joy. Puppetry is an art that activates dreamers, artists, writers, engineers to integrate and connect and let us feel what it feels to be human. Thank you.